Welcome back to the channel guys, in today's video we're going to be completely installing the AU Car Tesla screen. Now I wanted to start this video by giving a huge shout out to AU Car for sponsoring this video. They sent us the screen so we could install it, give it an honest review, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Now this screen will fit any 2005 through 2015 Toyota Tacoma, so any second gen. And if you go to the description below, I will have the link that will take you directly to their website and the product. Now they did give me a promo code, ZACTCM22, that will also be in the description below. But if you use that at checkout, you'll receive $50 off. This video is a little bit longer and has a few different parts, so I took the liberty of time stamping it below as well, so you could jump to the part that makes the most sense for you. Of course we're going to be starting with taking out the stock unit, which is actually the easiest part of this whole process. You can see here that you're just prying off that bottom part that has all of the air controls and you could use really any tool that you want to pry those off and then you're going to be able to just disconnect that from the harness. Now we didn't, but for your safety you can disconnect the car battery. And that's probably the smartest thing to do anytime you're messing with all the electricals inside of a car. You can see our lights are flashing and we just completely forgot to do that step. The only thing holding it in now is these four different bolts. You can see them here. You're just going to take a 10 millimeter and pop those out. Now the star of this video is my friend Gabe. He's the one doing all the work here and all these shots. He would truly appreciate it if you smash that like button. That's going to help this video reach more people. It helps the YouTube algorithm. And it's going to help Gabe sleep better at night. So go ahead and smash the like button. And if you haven't already, think about subscribing. We have a lot of second gen videos coming soon. I know we're going to address some rust. We're going to go ahead and put on a lift kit. Put on some tires. Put in the deck system. Put in a bed rack. I don't want you to miss it. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon. As you can see here, after we took out the four bolts, we just pried this loose and popped it out. Just like we did earlier in the video, we're just going to be disconnecting everything from the back of this unit. And I'm going to go ahead and let Gabe explain what some of these wires are that we just disconnected. We've got one, two, three electrical connectors to the radio and the antenna, and then one down here. That's the last one. Here's one more look at this head unit that we just took out and you can see behind it is all the wiring that we just disconnected. Now we're about to go back inside and prep for the install. These four white clips are going right here. Now we are using the clips that came from the unit that we just took out so be sure to take those off carefully. We know from experience that they will break. These clips are needed so there's a snug fit when installing. These two, put them there. These four, put them there. We had four white clips going at the bottom here, and we had two yellows at the top. This right here is the, the factory climate controls, and this is gonna plug directly into the unit. You're not gonna use another wiring harness for it. So it plugs into the unit just like this. Like that. And so then we can go ahead and start connecting everything else. This here is for also, that's also for the climate controls and that plugs in right above the first big plug for the AC controls, just like that. This black plug, this one's gonna go up here, right underneath the red 10 amp fuse. Like that. And then we've got this guy and it goes right here. Okay, I don't believe we're gonna use that one or that one. Okay, so now this is our radio antenna. We'll save this one for last because it doesn't have a lot of slack. Uh, this right here is for the GPS and we've got the GPS antenna just nestled back in there. Uh, figured we might as well just leave it back there instead of mounting it just for the sake of running wires. And it plugs in 
right here like that up at top this is the connection for the obd2 port and you do have to run wires for it that runs down to the diagnostics port and it plugs in just like this like that And then we've got the connection for the USB ports, and we've got this run into the glove box, the two USB ports, and it plugs into the top of the unit up here in that connection right there. At this point, it's just mocked up, um, and everything's plugged up, but there's not enough slack to really show you the mock-up. That's why it's balancing right here, and we're about ready to power it on for the first time, something like that. Hey, there it is. Lights are on right here. All right. Okay, so last we got the, the uh, radio antenna, which plugs in right here, just like that. And then I believe everything else is plugged up and we just gotta guide the wires in and pop the tabs into place. Now before you pop this into place, like we did in the clip before, test everything out, make sure everything's in the right spot, make sure the screen's working properly, that way you don't have to, you know, pop this back out. I hear once it's popped in, it's not the easiest to pop back out, so just take that into consideration while you're doing the install. And that's pretty much all you have to do to get this thing installed. Nice. And this is just the first startup with it completely installed. And everything looks good. And jumping into first impressions, this thing took my truck to the next level. I went from having a CD player to having Bluetooth calling, Android Auto, and just a massive beautiful screen. You can see it came with some apps already downloaded and you could change the brightness up and down. It has a day and a night mode. There's a few apps that come with it, but I went ahead and connected to my hotspot on my phone so I could use the Google Play Store and downloaded Karasi Roads. So now that I have this downloaded to the head unit, I could actually play without any internet connection so I don't have to be connected to my hotspot. And I absolutely love that. If you can think of any games or any apps that you think would just be really cool on this setup, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to check them out. They do have a tabs button on the top right. You could click it and close out of all your tabs and you'll go straight back to the home screen. In the middle of the home screen, you're gonna see the navigation button. If you press it, it's gonna go to your default app. My default is Google Maps. And I just clicked on the Play Store and you can see it pops up in a split screen so I could do multitasking. Here I'm clicking on Google and you can see it pops up as well. And then I hit back, back, go back to the home screen. You can still change the volume from the steering wheel, but you can also change it from the screen. You can also tell that they moved the air conditioner buttons and they put those on the sides, but they also have a dedicated part on the bottom of the screen. And I typically find myself using the buttons on the screen more often. In this unit, when you put it in reverse, it's gonna go straight to this screen. Now if you have a camera and you have that plugged in, it will be showing you the backup camera. It also has some options for if you have the bird's eye view where you can see all the way around your car. So that's really cool that they have that set up if you wanted to take advantage of that technology as well. And once you're in this mode, you're not going to be able to hear any calls. It's going to stop all your music. So that's something to be aware of. This unit does have the options for either Android CarPlay or Apple CarPlay. So it doesn't matter if you have a Samsung or an Apple phone, you're going to be able to take advantage of the CarPlay options. Now you can do this wired, but you can do it wireless as well. I like to do it wired typically just so I could have my phone charging the whole time. But just being able to take advantage of CarPlay is a game changer. In a few months, I will be coming out with a video going over a full tutorial on how to use this head unit once I have it mastered. Right now, I'm just figuring everything out. There's so much to do on this tablet and I just want to figure out how to best utilize it. Like I've said guys, I've only had this for a week, but so far my first impressions are all positive. 
I went from having absolutely no technology, a CD player, no aux cord, and now I could do, you know, wireless calling. I could do Android Auto, which has all my Spotify, all my music, all my navigation. So I'm absolutely loving it. I've been doing hands-free calling, and it's just been, it's been a game changer for me. So for my situation, this was an absolute no-brainer. I went from zero to hero overnight, and it just made a lot of sense. I know a lot of you, though, have a newer stock unit that may have the backup camera, that may have the screens, that may have a lot of these options. So you're going to really have to weigh the pros and the cons to see if something like this would make sense for you and your situation. Now, before I found AUCAR and the Tesla screen, I was looking at a few different options for aftermarket units. This one was the biggest screen I could find, and it does look really natural when it's in place. Of course, I have the link of this product in the description below. Check it out just to see some of the features that I didn't get to in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to get to them as fast as I can. And if you find yourself buying this unit, use my promo code that's also in the description below to save $50 at checkout. Now guys, if you made it this far in the video, go ahead and smash the like button and subscribe. We're going to be building this truck out to be an overland rig, hopefully throughout the summer. And coming towards the fall, we should be able to have some videos coming out about us testing it out. I do want to say thank you for watching this video. I hope you found some value in it. And as a thank you for staying this long, I'm going to give you some bonus footage of Gabe during the install. Hope you enjoy. And four. Awesome. Got it real good. Or if you want to show the labor with my big old head in the way, I guess. I don't want this guy to fall down into Narnia. Oh no. I guess now we can um, we can show them the wires and what, what we're going to use for our application. And, uh, you know, tell them, hey, it's going to be different for everybody's truck because they all come with different options, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I've saved that for the voiceover, though. Okay, cool. Sweet. So, one, two, three, four. That worked out real good. That worked out real good.